Alpha Delium's Kids Extravaganza. My name's Helen and it's great to be with you. Shall we just open in prayer before we start today? So Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the week that we've just had. Lord, we just pray that you will give us ears to hear all the wonderful things you want to tell us today. Thank you for keeping us safe and bringing us here to this video today. In your precious name, Lord, we pray your blessers. Amen. Amen. So are you ready to do a bit of worship with me?
about the church the last few weeks and what it is to be part of the church. This week, we're going to be thinking about what it is to be a good friend. So our story is from the Old Testament and it's about two friends, Ruth and Naomi, and how the two of them were loyal to each other. So sit back, snuggle down. Here's our story. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. A famine came to Israel. Elimelech, Naomi, and their sons went to Moab to find food. Elimelech died. The sons married Moabite women, Orpah and Ruth. Then the sons died too. The three women had no husbands. When the famine in Israel was over, Naomi decided to go home. Stay in Moab, she said to her daughters-in-law. It's your home. Orpah stayed. But Ruth said, Wherever you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Together, Ruth and Naomi went back to Israel. It was harvest time in Israel. Naomi told Ruth to gather the bits of grain left behind in a field. The field belonged to Boaz, Elimelech's relative. Boaz approached Ruth. You were very kind to Naomi, Boaz said. Leaving home must have been hard. May God bless you. He gave Ruth food and told his workers to watch over her. Ruth told Naomi what happened. Naomi smiled. When someone dies, his closest relative cares for his family. That person is their kinsman redeemer. Boaz is our kinsman redeemer. Stay close to him. So Ruth stayed close to Boaz. He liked her more each day. Boaz bought Elimelech's land and took care of Naomi and Ruth. Then he asked Ruth to marry him. Ruth had a son called Obed. Obed's son was Jesse. Jesse's son was David. And David became Israel's greatest king. So God blessed Ruth just as Boaz had prayed. Gosh, what a story that was. Poor Ruth and poor Naomi fancy losing all the men in their family. But you know what? Naomi was so loyal to Ruth that she put Ruth before herself. She said, it would be easy for me to stay where all my friends are, but actually I care about you so much that I want to be with you because she knew that Ruth was very sad and that it would be hard for her to go back home. So Naomi put herself second and put Ruth first. And actually then God's richest blessings were poured upon her because it's always better to give than to receive. It tells us that in the Bible as well, that actually putting people before us is really important. And that's what makes a really good loyal friend. And Jesus gave us the very best example of putting people before himself when he died on the cross for us. So it's going to be really good this week to remember that good friends are loyal. So we'll have a look at our memory verse this week to help us remember that as we go through our week this week. And just as Jesus was so loyal to us and put us first when he died on the cross, can you find times this week to try and put people before yourself and be a really good friend to them? Are you ready? Here's our memory verse. Now our memory verse this week comes from Proverbs. But as you can see, I've had a bit of a disaster with it. So I wonder if you could help me work out what our memory verse might be. So, ah, it's from Proverbs. Now I wonder where in Proverbs it's from. So let's put Proverbs at the top here. Aha, I have found some numbers. So it's from Proverbs 17 verse 7. Ah, perfect. Look, that fits together beautifully. 
Proverbs 17, verse 7. Hmm, now then, I wonder if I can find a bit that fits just here, look. Ah, ah. Hmm, now then, what have we been talking about this week? We've been talking about friends. I wonder if I could find a bit that might match with the word friends. Let's see. Is that going to work? I think it might. There we go. A friend is always, and here's that big word, loyal. I wonder if you could think of what loyal means. Loyal means that you are always there by somebody's side no matter what, that nothing puts you off, that you stay there all the time, a bit like sticking like glue. So a friend is loyal, always there. And, hmm, I need an orange piece. Here we go. I wonder what this world's going to say. And a brother. Now, we've been talking about what it is to be part of the family of God. And a couple of weeks ago, we talked about who were our brothers and sisters. Because I haven't got a brother. I've got a sister. But this isn't talking about the brothers and sisters that live in your house with you. This is talking about the people that we are in church with, the people around us. And it could say brother or sister. This means all the people around us that are part of our family. Even more loyal than friends, a brother is born to help. Oh, we're missing a little word there. Here is our final piece. To help in times of need. Let's say that all together and let's think about what that means. Proverbs 17 verse 7. A friend is always loyal and a brother is born to help in time of need. Can you think what that means? Loyal, always there to help, always there to look after, always there to care for, especially if our friends are in need. So Ruth was in need. She needed a friend. She needed someone to help look after her. She needed someone to help encourage her, to be kind to her. And Naomi was there. And that's what we need to remember this week as we go about our life, is who can we show that extra special care, extra special kindness, extra special love to this week? It could be a friend, or it could be someone who's part of your family or part of your church family. Sometimes that's the hardest people to be showing your love and care to. But this is a command in the Bible that we need to be loyal and caring and kind and helpful. Now, for a craft this week, I was thinking about friends and I was thinking about mm, what would be a nice thing to do. And I thought we could have a go at making some friendship bracelets for each other. So I've got a couple of ideas here for you. You just need a strip of paper or a strip of card, something that will go around your wrist and then a little bit more. So this one goes around my wrist and a little bit more. And then this is a really cool idea. So I've cut one into the shape of a part, but I've split it in half and put the heart at either end of my strip. And then this one, because we really like doing this in our garden, I've got a little football that I've cut in half and then put that at each end of my strip too. You can write whatever you like in this part of your strip or decorate it however you like. I've just written there our memory verse that says friends are loyal because that's what we've been learning this week, that friends are loyal. Then you'll need a pair of scissors. Now, this is really important. We get this bit right. You need to take the first part of your um, friendship bracelet and cut halfway up. Now I've cut from the bottom there, look, and I've cut about halfway up. Then you come to the other side and you cut halfway down. Now the cool part about that is, when you bend your friendship bracelet down, you can put this half into this half and then it makes your football. Now, you can share this with somebody who is a good friend to you or that you would like to be a good friend to them. So that's my football one. Here we go. Look, I've decorated this one with some balloons and some streamers. 
So I'm going to bend it round my wrist. It's often easier if you've got a friend to help you with this bit. And then I've cut my half a heart there, look, at the bottom, and my half a heart there at the top. When I thread them together, da, there's my friendship bracelet to remind me that friends are loyal. And there's my heart to remind me. Well, I hope you enjoyed our story of Ruth and Naomi today and Boaz. And I hope you enjoyed making your friendship bracelets to remind you that we need to be good, loyal friends. And I just wonder, as have we've been working through Kids Extravaganza, if you've come to know Jesus as your friend. And actually, it's really easy to be a friend of God. And there are just three little things we need to remember. And that's our A, B, C. So first is to admit, admit that we don't always get things right and that sometimes we get things wrong. So we need to just talk to God and say sorry and say we're sorry that we get it wrong because those sins, we call them sins, the things we do wrong, separate us from a holy, perfect God. But if we admit our sins and then B is to believe, so admit your sins and say you're sorry, believe that Jesus died on the cross for you and that is the best thing a friend could ever do is give their life for somebody and that's what Jesus did for us he died on the cross and shed his blood now if you believe that and say you're sorry for your sins and ask Jesus to come into your heart then you can be really good friends with him and that means that Jesus will help you through your life you can talk to her about anything and that one day we will go to heaven and the last thing then is to choose, to choose to live your life the way Jesus would ask you to. And we do that together. That's what family is. And that's what we've been talking about being part of our church. You're not on your own, that there are people around you that also love Jesus. So tell somebody if you've made that decision today that you've admitted your sins, that you believe Jesus died for you and that you've chosen to be a special friend of God. Make sure you tell somebody that you trust about that decision. And I'd like to pray for us now. So Father, we just thank you that you are the best friend anybody could ever have. And please help us be really good friends to those around us, not just this week, but always. Because friends are loyal the way that you showed us how to be loyal. So we ask that you'll help us with this. In your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So amen. Have a great week and I'll see you soon.